Sabine Malou, uh, and uh, uh, I founded uh, Peace Niche on the second floor in 2007. Um, and I, that's when I met Asim in the early uh, part of the year. And uh, I wanted that he should come in, that, that I wanted to do a mural on the walls, and someone suggested that there's this great artist, Asim Bhatt, who's been doing street graffiti, and why don't you go and meet him? And so, uh, so we went to see him, and, and there was an immediate connection. He, he was so vibrant and so full of energy. He loved the idea of what we wanted to do at the space. And he got really excited, and he said, when can we go and see the place? And I said, and what struck me about Asim throughout the time that he was doing the, the mural was his amazing childlike enthusiasm. He, he used to jump up and down and clap his hands with glee. And that is the image that I can't get out of my mind when I think about him. And we said, that there was this one wall which uh, we wanted him to paint on. And he said, I'll come to you and when there will not be anything, and I'll be undisturbed and whatever. And we said, fine, we gave him a key and he, he started working. And actually, we, we also talked about the fact that, you know, since it was the first time we were commissioning a piece of art, that it shouldn't actually be done on the walls because it was a rented space. And he said, okay, so I'll do plywood and I'll do three months. And we're like, but we have to start and it's a very long time. And he said, so I'll give you some of my paintings to hang on the wall. And we're like, no, no, that won't be any fun. So he said, okay, I'll just scribble on the walls and then we'll work on it. And then he was let loose on these walls. And every time we'd come back in the morning, he'd done more work and more work. And then he started coloring it in. Like one day we came back in the morning and he colored an entire wall. Uh, Mariam, if you could just show that. So this is the wall that he started with. <laughs> this, was, this mural was called Class. And, um, and so he did this one wall, and then the next day we came back and he'd done another wall. And you can see that, which, is, which was my favorite part of the entire space. And Asim's mural actually just defined T2F for the year and a half that we were in that space. And the third part was that I wanted to do something I wanted to do some graphic design work. And then one day, Asim made it for us. And again, it was that, just that sheer uh, passion and enthusiasm of just, being, of just having these three empty walls. I think for a mural painter, graffiti artist, it's, it's just the best thing to just have these empty walls. And nothing could stop him. And it just kept getting more and more intense. And, uh, and it was just delightful. Uh, so Asim would just keep coming back every now and then, and then he'd look at the mural. And, and the other thing that you know, was just amazing about Asim was that he was never satisfied. He never wanted to let a canvas go. He, you know, we'd say, ke khatam ho gaya, ab isko jane do, and he'd be like, nahi, isme aur bedri aa sakti. And, and that was what really, you know, his professionalism was just unbelievable. And then the other facet of Asim, and there's some people here, who uh, became friendly with him, uh, got to know him in 2007, just after the emergency during the martial law days. So Asim, the activist, then became known to a lot of people. If you would just uh, open it. And, and this famous symbol, the eject sign, is something that he sat and designed at T2F in front of a few people. And uh, it was plastered all over the city. So he, we, we would sit and make the stencils. He, he made the stencils, then he showed us how to do more. And then we would go and buy spray paint, and then we would go out all over the city putting this symbol everywhere. And if you just go forward, um, I'm sure <laughs> some of you will see yourself. Uh, and that's Asim talking about protest graffiti. And, um, and we were preparing for a protest at the press club. Uh, and if you go to the next one. Um, and this was his other symbol, you know, trying to just show that Pakistan is in a, in a loop. And, Again, this was another day that we were preparing to go out and do our subversive activities. And that, there you can see the stencil. And then uh, the GT magazine of all things, much to our horror, <laughs> as activists. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
just decided to profile all of us who've been part of the people's resistance movement. And we would, when people would say, hey, we've seen you in GT, please ask me. 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 Please ask we managed to get Asim to sign. Uh, all we have left of that mural that he did for us, unfortunately, is the panaflex that you see outside on the building and a mug which he very graciously allowed us to, to use the images of the mural on that mug. He said, you're a non-profit, I believe in what you do and you can use this. And he came in and he signed for that mug, which we have if anyone wants to have a look at it. Um, and print upstairs. And, and there's a small portion, the, the, my favorite part of the mural were those two boys and we've got upstairs, we've got a first floor and there's a niche in which we've got a large photograph of it. So if you'd like to go and see that, then please do. Um, so that's all I have to say. Asim uh, was just such an amazing, amazing individual. So, so unique. And uh, his grandmother's house is just across the street from here. So when this new space opened, he would just come bounding over, he would come and have a coffee and grab some water and then run back. And just two days before he died, I, I went over and saw all his new work. And he had all these stones from the Metropole Hotel, which he said that he would <coughs> like to uh, give us some, you know, some of the pieces. And he was going to come and paint on the balcony floor upstairs. And we were going to do a little installation piece of the Metropole Hotel. And he was, uh, he was going to, the night that he died, uh, he, he said that he was going to come over and then at quarter to ten he said, okay, sorry, I'll come tomorrow. And, uh, you know, so, so that was it. And uh, so that's all I have to say. You want to read this for people? Should I, yeah, should I read this out? Um, <coughs> I paint because it allows me to stare shamelessly, to be able to flesh out an idea, emotion, or commit to an image, a shadow of the world around me. I paint because there is a spillover of energy within that must find form or else it will haunt and twist me. I paint to commit an act of magic and pleasure for myself, for the love of my audience, and for an abstract notion of my muse's gaze. I paint to validate myself and to discover surprises <coughs> within and without. I paint as penance for my inadequacies. I paint to understand the world around me and to own and disown what I desire or dislike in it. I paint as a political act to express my power over power larger than myself. I paint to create what it is I want to see, to fill an absence in 